Hello everybody! Today I want to talk about China Mountain Zhang by Maureen F. McHugh. I am not going to be super coherent here because I just read this book yesterday. I have not put my thoughts in any semblance of order. I just loved this book so much I want to talk about it right away. This reminded me of quite a few other books in, in very positive ways, um, especially Slow River by Nicola Griffith in terms of its focus on the the everyday actions of characters on the quietness the how mundane uh their lives are but fit into a greater whole um also because of the political situation it reminded me of the man in the high castle by philip k dick this is the sf masterworks edition that came out in late 2016 and it has an introduction in it by joe walton and i, I love reading what joe walton has to say about any book but she points out that this is a very well done mosaic novel and i did not know that there was a term for this type of novel. I usually think of them as, as fix-up novels, but that's not technically accurate. A mosaic novel is one where a greater overarching story is told through individual stories. These stories could stand on their own. They share a cast of characters, but they are all intertwining for a point. It turns out that I have loved and enjoyed a whole bunch of mosaic novels in the past couple of years and just didn't know what to call them. Central Station by Lobby Tidar is the one that immediately springs to mind, but also uh, Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel, probably David Mitchell's work, and a whole slew of other things. I guess I just really like stories that are told well using this method. I, I enjoy short fiction, but I also I, I like how this switches between viewpoints and such while still telling a complete story. The major event that has shaped the world in China Mountain Zhang is that the United States went through a socialist revolution after a second Great Depression, and the country is now a satellite nation of China. China is the dominant power in the world, and everything and everybody, including communes on Mars, are socialist. The main character is Zhang. He's a construction engineer in New York City, and he is trying to live in the cracks to eke out a life to be happy to be fulfilled in some way maybe while not being noticed because he doesn't fit in and he is not accepted culturally um, he is what's called american-born chinese the the highest thing you can be is a chinese person born in china and everyone wants to go to china and be educated there and be accepted there he however is American-born Chinese, further complicated by the fact that he's not actually completely Chinese. His father was Chinese, his mother was Hispanic, and he was gene-spliced to appear more like his father than his mother. So he passes himself off socially as ABC, but trying very hard to keep people from discovering that he's not. On top of this, Zhang is also gay, which is completely illegal. This is not an action-packed book. Nothing earth-shattering happens in it. And it's not about revolutionaries. It's not about one person changing the world. It's about one person just trying to survive in the world. Like, he is not necessarily opposed to the world order. He just wants to use it to his own benefit like everybody else is. And I liked the focus on the everyday on struggles of, of feeling lazy but knowing one has to get an education, worrying about getting a, a good job, making enough money, crashing on other people's couches and stuff. That just, that's super relatable against the backdrop of really interesting political upheavals, how technology is used, that people have colonized Mars and everything. There's just this everyday stuff that I think appeals and relates to many people. Now because this is a mosaic novel, there are other chapter stories from other people's perspectives. You have Angel who is a, a kite flyer. She, she flies kites and races around the city, which is very dangerous but <laughs> adrenaline filled. Um, Martine and Alexi who live on Mars, who are trying to make a life in one of the communes there. And then there is San Zhang, a young Chinese woman who originally dated Zhang because her father was his boss who wanted him to marry his daughter. Daughter. It's complicated, there are reasons. And she has a facial disfigurement. 
and has to struggle with that and then fixing it? Does that actually change her life positively? All this comes around to what is it like to live in this type of world. I know very little about socialism or Marxism and a lot of the, the political stuff that's going on in this book, but I still found it completely immersive. I cared about the characters very much. They were real, they were people, they were flawed. And in some of like Martine's chapters where she's describing helping somebody, you know, being charitable, taking care of someone else, but also really wanting them to leave her house and leave her alone, trying to be to be a good person while also wanting your own space to be selfish a little bit. I really felt that. <laughs> And it's the characters that make this come alive, and I think it is amazing that this book felt so grand scale, so huge, when it's really just relating a couple of years in, in one person or a couple of people's lives, and it does it in slightly over 300 pages. I also think this is an interesting book to read in our current political climate because it envisions a future in America, a world after a major political upheaval, maybe sort of like what we're going through right now, but it's not a dystopia. It's dark, but I didn't find it depressing. It's not what I would want for our future, but it's an alternative. It, get, it gets the mind working about how this sort of thing can happen. It has its dark points, but there are also positive things in it when seen from these people's perspectives. I'm not sure I can say much more than that, that I utterly love this book. It was masterfully written, exceptionally well pulled off. I want to read a lot more by Maureen McHugh. I don't know how prolific she is, but I want to read more of her novels if they are anything like this. So that's the end of my gush. Thank you very much for watching. I hope I have been slightly coherent, and I will talk to you again soon. Bye.